Starbound was a game with potential. The potential to really do something fresh and exciting and to really live up to the expectations that were set out in front of it. Unfortunately for Starbound, this game was made by Chucklefish, so the game didn't meet any of the expectations now, did it? Starbound is an adventure sandbox game taking place in a procedurally generated 2D world consisting of space and stuff. The game starts with you barely escaping the destruction of Earth by a giant hentai monster and you set out into a wide open world with nothing but your beat up shit, your trusty matter manipulator, and your incredibly low will to live. Did I mention that it's pretty much just Terraria in space? because it's pretty much just Terraria in space. This game has been out for quite a while now, and as mentioned before, the game had some pretty high hopes upon release, and the devs tried to convince us that they'd pull through. I've had the game since 2013, and at that point it was a nice little idea, but wasn't fleshed out enough to really be worth playing for an extended period of time. Come 2016, we'd had enough of fucking waiting, and finally, Chucklefish had given us an official release. And although there was a whole lot more to do in this game, it still felt a little empty. Across the gameplay and storyline of Starbound in particular, there's a few little things here and there and a couple of big things that really set this game back from being something really enjoyable. Control to Major Tom. Starbound is pretty big on the whole procedurally generated open world exploration thingy, which in theory can be a super fun thing and can really make a game super replayable and exciting every time you play. However, much like communism and my YouTube channel, it's never as good in practice as it is in theory. This game, despite being released before it, has a real No Man's Sky vibe, in that pretty much every planet you explore is mediocre as fuck. The procedurally generated planets, while all somewhat unique, all consist of a few pre-generated structures, usually a mini dungeon and some other boring shit, and the exploration of a planet will pretty much play out the same for every planet in the galaxy. The only real noticeable difference between lots of planets is that they simply have different biomes and different ores that you can mine. Just because the leveling of terrain is slightly different and maybe there's a slightly different colour palette doesn't mean that it's not basically the same shit you've already seen a few hundred times before. The same can be said of a lot of the creatures that inhabit the worlds. There's a few that are present on a bunch of different planets, and then there's a little bit of variation in that. Again, they have a different colour palette and maybe spit lightning instead of fire. Boring. The game does also put an emphasis on settlement and base building, which is something that definitely appealed to me, and I think that it gives you a good amount of different resources to make cool and interesting stuff. Placing and mining stuff is done with your matter manipulator tool, which is a handy dandy little thing that does exactly as it suggests. It manipulates matter. Removing pickaxes as your main mining tool and making the matter manipulator the most important tool at your disposal was a good move, as pickaxes aren't exactly spacey fun times themed, and the matter manipulator makes building and mining much easier and is far more lore friendly. Building bases is pretty fun, and the game allows you to also buy colony deeds, which allow NPCs to move into houses and rooms that you make for them. Some serious Terraria vibes going on here, but I'm not complaining. The difference is that you simply buy the deed, put it down, and someone moves in. You don't have to do something in particular like kill a boss or anything before a certain type of NPC moves in. Therein lies a problem though. The NPCs are all really, really, really generic. Unlike Terraria's NPCs which all serve a specific purpose and have their own quotes and character, the Starbound Colonist NPCs are just randomly generated in either a merchant, a guard, or completely useless townsperson, depending what's placed in their room. They all also only have one line of dialogue when you talk to them, so unless they have a quest for you, there's no point in interacting with any of these boring robots unless you really want to hear their stupid one-liner again. You do get to recruit NPCs if you do enough stuff for them, however, which is a pretty neat mechanic. You can have multiple members in your crew, and you can even get a tailor to sort out uniforms and stuff, which is pretty neato burrito. Another issue I have with NPCs and building in this game is that pretty much every planet has something built on it, which I personally find quite annoying. There aren't really any blank canvases of planets to go out and shape as my own. It also means that there's a bunch of mediocre shit everywhere too, which makes exploration much less fun. They should have added more natural exploration stuff everywhere, rather than just blatantly annoying buildings dotted all over the place, which don't really make a whole lot of sense. Another pretty big issue with this game is the combat, in particular the randomly generated hostile mobs in this game. There's a whole lot of bad guys that will just run towards you and damage you on contact. It's pretty bland. The rest have a projectile attack or something and then get back to just trying to rub their bodies against yours. Not to mention the fact that the bosses are all a little bit too easy. Not a whole lot of challenge in that department. The combat system in general is something that was never really fleshed out from the initial release. Sure, there's some slightly new special moves and stuff you can do with certain weapons, but there's only really like 5 different specials in total. Terraria does the 2D combat system a whole lot better. Sure, a lot of the enemies in that game also just try and run towards you and damage you on contact, but there's so much more mobility and your character handles much tighter. There are also plenty of supplementary enemies, like mages, ranged enemies, burrowing worms and stuff, and the bosses are a lot more challenging and unique. The weapon system in progression is a lot more diverse and smooth and you can craft your own weapons and stuff rather than having to buy them or find them randomly generated inside dungeons or just random chests lying around the place. No, I mean some of them you do, but not all of them. This game does have multiplayer, and to be honest multiplayer makes the game quite a lot more fun. 
being able to form a party and clear dungeons and build stuff together is just inherently a fun thing in video games. The way multiplayer works could do with a bit of a rework, to be honest. Each player has to do the storyline quest missions individually, which is kinda dumb. Quest progress should just be for the entire party, it would make more sense, it would make the whole process less cluttered and confusing. There's plenty of Steam Workshop stuff for this game, and that's what really starts to make the game a little more interesting. I would almost certainly advise against playing this game vanilla because there's plenty of great mod packs and extra little touches that make the game better and more fleshed out. It's one of those games that really needs mods to reach its true potential, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but it might have something to say about the developers. Especially Chucklefish. Because they're lazy fucks. Something I don't like is when a sandbox game tries to shove a big dumbass story down your throat. Does that not go against the point of a sandbox? An open world that you can shape to be however you want it to be? Nah, you gotta follow some dickhead story that you don't care about instead. I get the idea of using the storyline to progress you through upgrades and dungeons and everything. That's cool, but I didn't give a shit. At all. No. I'm sorry. I don't care if the entire world is being slaughtered by a giant tentacle beast. I really don't. I just want to build and explore. Isn't that the whole point of a sandbox game? Why can't you progress more naturally through exploration and settling and mining and whatnot? Why is all of this locked through some dumbass storyline that requires you to walk around and look at shit until you get to actually do something fun? I'm not making that up either. You will actually just have to go around and look at enough shit to fill up a how much shit have I looked at bar. That's part of the game. I don't have any qualms with the beginning of the game really. Earth gets destroyed, you run away, sure, that's cool. It actually makes sense that the Earth doesn't exist now, because originally you were just in a random part of a random galaxy and Earth exists because humans exist, but nobody knows where it is because within the game it doesn't exist. Makes sense, right? The initial mission to land on the planet below and to find a way to activate the portal to the outpost is a good little tutorial too. The outpost also serves well as a little quest hub. Unfortunately, that initial tutorial doesn't ever seem to really stop. That's my main problem with the storyline. It feels like one long ass full length game tutorial with someone sitting in your ear telling you everything you have to do all the time. This really just goes against every single implication of a sandbox game. You want to go out and be a mercenary or a space pirate or something fucking cool? Well, too bad, because you have to be the hero and the chosen one and save the day. This shit is like a tub of Coles brand ice cream. It's so fucking vanilla. This game would be one million times better if it really let you go down a number of different progression paths. You want to be a rogue and go raid settlements and shit? Well, too bad, because you can't even attack most friendly NPCs anyway. If the game wasn't trying so hard to shoehorn you as some kind of space Jesus, then I think the actual sandbox aspect of it would be much better, considering you get to, you know, create your own character and everything. We're not RPing as generic white male hero number 3 here. So in the end, this game feels much less like a sandbox and more like a handholdy walk through a nice open world, but you really only have to go to the designated quest zone, like the galaxy's North Korea or something. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Pixel graphics. Good old fashioned pixel graphics. Starbound has actually done this pretty well. A lot of the sprite work is nice, as is the diversity between the different playable and NPC races, which make NPC structures, particularly the outposts, feel nice and alive and fresh. Character customization is pretty well fleshed out, and there's plenty of different looks you can go for. All of the races each have their own special bonuses and have different crafting recipes and stuff, which is a nice touch, and also makes multiplayer more interesting if you're playing in a party with multiple different races. The game also allows you to pick a personality, which is basically just how your character stands when idle, but is still a nice little feature. All that being said, some of the animation, particularly the combat animation, looks a little stiff at times. Although this certainly isn't the worst thing about the combat, let's be honest. The game also comes with a pretty delightful soundtrack, but not quite delightful enough to stop me from playing the game with the music muted while I just listen to my own music in the background. This is to major when it comes down to it, Starbound really is a game that still has a lot of potential. It has so many directions that it could go, and so many cool features that could be implemented, but in the end, the game's just fallen a little short. I guess a lot of the reason for thinking this could be attributed to the fact that Chucklefish really set out some high expectations for this game, or perhaps that the community in general was just too ambitious. While this game certainly has its charms and its fun moments, the exploration gets stale, NPCs and quests need to be fleshed out, and the game has the overriding story which makes the game feel like an interactive storybook or something. Either way, the game just really isn't where everyone was hoping it would be. Sure, there's plenty of mods and whatnot, but underneath there lies the base game, which in reality, is just not all up to scratch. And sure, this game already has all of these problems, but that's not even the worst of it. You wanna know what's really wrong with this game? They didn't add any whoopers to it. Come on, Chucklefish, really? You're gonna set out such high hopes for this game, and then you're gonna tell me that you're gonna half ass it, and then you're gonna tell me that there won't be any whoopers in it either? 
This is a disgrace, a complete and utter disgrace. There's no excuse for this kind of blatant whooper discrimination in the games industry. Sure, there's the high lotal race, which are essentially axolotl based creatures, but it's just not the same. Look, they've even got arms and shit. Whoopers don't have arms, Chucklefish. You can't get away with that. So in the end, not only does this game fall short of the expectations set out before it, it also falls short of the necessary whooper quota to make the game even worth playing. Look, if you want a 2D Minecraft, play Terraria. If you want 2D base building and fun combat and progression, play Terraria. If you really have no will to live whatsoever, play Starbound. But don't play Edge of Space. There's really no excuse for playing that one.